Maybe you drive past one of these churches every day. Pentecostals, that's churches like Assemblies of God, Church of God, Foursquare, or Church of God in Christ. We'll talk about another group called Oneness Pentecostals in another video. For Adventists, I'm talking in this video specifically about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and they are worldwide. In the U.S., for Presbyterians, you have the Presbyterian Church in America, Presbyterian Church USA, ECO, and more, and we'll be comparing all of these to the non-instrumental branch of Church of Christ congregations. So what really is different about all of these? First, let's talk about some things they all agree on. They all agree that Jesus is God and that he died and rose again. They all believe in a 66-book Bible. That's fewer books than the Catholic Church has, for example. And likewise, they don't believe in ministers having to remain single or celibate. An important part of understanding denomination differences is knowing a bit of the history, so give me one minute to cover that. Pentecostalism arose in the early 1900s, and there's no one founder figure, though Charles Parham and William Seymour both played major roles, teaching that there was an experience after salvation of baptism in the Holy Spirit and the speaking in tongues, that is, unknown languages, accompanies this. Adventist was the name chosen by a group that had previously been known as Millerites. William Miller had predicted that in 1844 Jesus would return, and when that didn't happen, his followers developed different explanations and went different ways. Many of these Adventists accepted the Seventh-day Sabbath and formed the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 1863. Presbyterians go further back to John Knox. Knox was influenced by Reformed theologian John Calvin and pushed his teaching in Scotland. Knox was an influential player in the Scottish Reformation, which led to the Church of Scotland splitting from the Catholic Church in 1560. From this church came Presbyterian denominations the world over. The Restoration Movement in the United States arose in the early to mid-1800s with Barton Stone and Alexander Campbell's movements merging in 1832. They sought not to form a new denomination, but for churches to simply be part of the church that Christ founded. And they believed the theology that they and had some cases rediscovered and restored represented that. By the early 1900s, there were a few divisions in the movement with Churches of Christ separating from the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, for example. Like many Christians, all four of these have salvation theology. They teach that a person can have eternal life with Jesus, but the details can differ. First, the question of election. Does God choose who will be saved, or does human free will play a part? The historic position of Pentecostals, Adventists, and Churches of Christ is one of free will, where any person could be saved, and they have the choice to accept or reject. Likewise, they would say that Jesus died for all people. For Presbyterians, they take a Calvinist position. Christ died for the elect only, and he has selected them for salvation to the exclusion of all others. Likewise, the same three also affirm that a person once saved can apostatize and be lost, while the Presbyterians teach perseverance of the saints, that once a person is saved, they are always saved. What's worship like when you visit one of these churches? Well, for Pentecostal churches, if you begin to attend, you can expect to see use of the gifts of the Spirit, a view sometimes called by the term charismatic. Maybe someone will speak in tongues in a service, or someone may give a word of knowledge or prophecy. Pentecostals believe that all the spiritual gifts mentioned in the New Testament are active today. On the opposite side of the spectrum are the Presbyterians. The standard Presbyterian view is called cessationism. That means they believe that miraculous spiritual gifts like tongues, working of miracles, and predictive prophecy have ceased. Today, there is a minority that are not cessationists, though, and even some charismatics which do practice the use of spiritual gifts. Churches of Christ are also cessationist. Adventists generally hold the middle view of continuationism. They don't believe that any spiritual gifts have necessarily ceased, but they would also be skeptical that what takes place in a Pentecostal church is a legitimate use of spiritual gifts. And Adventists believe in the gift of prophecy and that a woman named Ellen G. White had it. Ellen White wrote books, and her writings guide the SDA interpretation of Scripture still today. The other denominations don't accept her writings as authoritative. Beyond the question of spiritual gifts in worship, though, Pentecostal churches today may have contemporary music mixed with hymns, and some churches have just one or the other. This is also the case for Adventists, though some conservative Adventist churches are opposed to contemporary music. In a Church of Christ congregation, there is no instrumental music, only a cappella. Note there is another group of churches called Christian churches and churches of Christ that do use instruments and come from the same historical background as churches of Christ, 
but they're not who we're discussing in this video. Presbyterians have a range. Some today have contemporary praise music, but of all the denominations we're mentioning, the Presbyterians have a much more liturgical style. This means they often have ministers that wear special garments, they may use the organ and have a planned service from a lectionary, so some churches you can expect to only have hymns and no contemporary music. Even further, there are some denominations of Presbyterians that don't allow hymns, but only singing the biblical psalms. And some of these don't allow instruments, but are a cappella like Churches of Christ. And speaking of worship, what about the Sabbath? Seventh-day Adventists observe the Seventh-day Sabbath. That means they worship and rest from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. This is a serious matter, and many Adventists teach that if someone willfully decides to continue to not observe the Sabbath, they can lose their salvation. For Presbyterians, they believe that the Sabbath is observed on Sunday, and some conservative Presbyterians are strict about not treating it lightly. For example, if you watch the movie Chariots of Fire, Eric Little, who wouldn't run in the Olympics on a Sunday, was a Presbyterian. For Churches of Christ, like Presbyterians, they worship on Sunday, but the standard view is not that Sunday is the Sabbath, but rather that the Sabbath is no longer something Christians need to observe, and instead Sunday worship is done for other reasons, like the New Testament mentions of Christ appearing and the church breaking bread on the first day of the week. Pentecostal churches too meet on Sundays and often would hold the same position. Now, let's talk about the sacraments. For Pentecostals, there are normally two or three, and some denominations would rather use the term ordinances. There is baptism, always done by immersion only and always for believers only, not infants. Second is the Lord's Supper. Most often, the cup is grape juice, not fermented wine. The possible third is feet washing, which some practice and not others. Adventists practice the same three, baptism, also by immersion and only for believers, the Lord's Supper or Communion, which has grape juice and not fermented wine, and feet washing is done at the same time. Presbyterians don't believe in washing feet as a sacrament, though some may do it yearly on Maundy Thursday. The two sacraments are baptism for believers and their infant children, which can be by any mode, but sprinkling is common, and communion or the Lord's Supper. Presbyterians are most likely to serve wine and not grape juice. Many are opposed to the cup not being fermented wine. For Churches of Christ, feet washing is not practiced at all, but they do observe baptism and the Lord's Supper. Some call them ordinances, but others give no special term to these at all. Baptism is only for believers, not infants, and only by immersion. The Lord's Supper in some churches is with fermented wine and others grape juice. As far as the effect of the ordinances or sacraments and presence of Christ, for Pentecostals, baptism is not necessary for salvation, but comes after. Adventists view baptism as something that a person must do if possible, and willingly not being baptized can prevent salvation. Presbyterians don't believe that baptism is a necessary part of salvation, but they do believe that it signifies what does save, the washing of regeneration, and that it conveys divine grace. Churches of Christ believe that baptism carries with it the remission of sins through the blood of Christ and that it is necessary for salvation. In communion, Pentecostals, Adventists, and Churches of Christ believe that the bread and wine simply represent Christ's body and blood, a view called the memorial or symbolic view. Presbyterians hold a view that Christ's body and blood are spiritually present with the communion elements. It's not just symbolic. Of these denominations, only Adventists generally allow baptism to be repeated. That is, if a person falls away from the church, for example, they may desire to rejoin with baptism, and this will be done. The other denominations don't view baptism as a repeatable thing. On end times, Pentecostals are mostly, but not all, premillennial. The premillennialists believe there is a future reign of Christ on this earth that will last 1,000 years. Many of these are dispensational and teach that Christians will be taken out of the earth in an event called the rapture during a seven-year tribulation period, after which they will return for the millennium. Adventists are also premillennial, but not dispensational. They don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. As Ellen White taught, they believe that the tribulation is actually in the past. They believe during the millennium, Christ will reign from heaven and the earth will be completely desolate. They also teach that there is taking place now a judgment called the investigative judgment, while the other denominations teach that judgment will not begin until either the rapture or second coming. Presbyterians are most likely amillennial, no literal 1,000-year millennium. The only thing left is Christ's return and the final judgment. Some, though, are post-millennial, meaning that there is a millennial reign on earth that ends with the second coming, an optimistic view that sees Christians advancing the kingdom forward in the time leading up to the return of Christ. A tiny minority are premillennial. Churches of Christ hold the amillennial position. On the church's government, Pentecostals can vary, with some denominations having bishops and thus an episcopal polity. Many are congregationally run as well. 
Adventist church polity is called representative and is a mix of congregational and Presbyterian polity. Local churches have some level of freedom, but ministers are appointed from higher up, and the church's general conference makes authoritative decisions for the church. Presbyterians, as the name states, have Presbyterian polity with a church run by their church session and then ascending church courts. Churches of Christ are the most congregational of all with no centralized structure. Each church is completely autonomous and there's no organization that represents them. There's no website, nothing, just churches that share certain core beliefs and fellowship with each other. Let's talk about a few other distinctive beliefs in these denominations. On conversion, Pentecostals, Adventists, and Churches of Christ expect those who want to be baptized to have a moment of saving faith, a conversion that happens at a particular time. Some Presbyterians view things much the same way, but others are content to see a person growing up in the faith and not looking for a precise moment that they were saved. In the Presbyterian view, regeneration precedes faith and salvation is all of God, not because of a human decision. However, if they do believe in this conversion experience, they still would have baptism before it when the child was an infant. Pentecostals believe following this conversion experience that believers should seek a second Holy Spirit baptism experience and that a person can know they had it when they speak in tongues, but the other three don't teach this experience. Adventists teach that a person who dies before the resurrection is in an unconscious state, while the others normally teach that such a person is conscious in heaven or hell. Adventists also believe that after the final judgment, those who do not receive eternal life do not go to an eternal hell, but rather are cast into the lake of fire, burn up completely, and put out of existence. Other views that only the Adventists hold are that a person should not eat the unclean foods mentioned in the Bible, and a strong emphasis on healthy living called the health message. Adventists have also historically favored the non-combatant stance when it comes to war, but not all individual Adventists observe this today. On women in ministry, Pentecostals from their beginnings have been open to women serving as ministers. There are some denominations today that disallow women from being pastors or bishops, but the majority allow them. Adventists are making this decision on the division level, with some divisions allowing women as local elders and others not. For Presbyterians, the most theologically conservative denominations disallow women as teaching and ruling elders, the more liberal denominations allow them, and there are moderate ones between the two that have women elders but hold other theologically conservative stances. Churches of Christ only allow men to be preachers in their churches. On same-sex marriage, Pentecostals, Adventists, and Churches of Christ do not allow it, and for Presbyterians, some theologically liberal denominations do allow it, and all the conservative denominations do not. Lutherans, Reformed, Methodists, and Baptists, another four denominations to compare. Click here to watch this video.